Logan pretty much tore everything in his knee. They're going to have to amputate the leg <laughs> okay. completely. He's going to continue to wrestle in the WWE. It's like a pirate base pseudonym. Captain Jack Ihop. After the amputation, we'll be adding a wooden peg. Correct. Which is going to make his frog splashes a little bit more difficult. But I think he'll <laughs> be able more to... dangerous. Yeah, I think he'll be able to pull it off. <laughs> Mike Malak, welcome to the Courtside Club. Thank you for having me. Like I said earlier, I don't know why you'd want to, but here I am. Well, my fans, I'm sure, know you from the night shift, from Impulsive, of course, and your WWE debut, Saudi Arabia. Is that where you were? Yeah, Saudi, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Okay. WWE Crown Jewel, Logan Paul, Roman Reigns, just over-the-top, all-out war battle. Some are calling it one of the top 10 matches in WWE history. I mean, this was huh. a 35-minute house of pain. <laughs> Just over-the-top slams, frog splashes with the athletic Logan Paul. And then um, me and my friend George, co-host of Impulsive, the world's number one podcast, we, we did a little bit too much <laughs> talking. It happened to us in real life. So can you break it down for our listeners, viewers, who might not have seen the clip on your Instagram page of you getting beat up. Yeah, so Logan had already been engaged in this battle royale with Roman uh, for the for the championship belt of the WWE. You know, the whole world was watching. We were in this uh, massive stadium in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. And uh, there was a part of the match where Logan was gonna get on the top rope, jump and frog splash on top of Roman on top of a table, right, through a table. Right. And so he came over. He asked George if he could use his cell phone to record it. He was going to shoot it selfie style. So Logan asked George. Correct. Okay. So he, he takes the phone. He gets up on the on the top rope. And he, like, selfie modes, jumping through Roman Reigns through the table. The crowd goes crazy. Now, in that moment, the Usos, who are Roman Reigns' like bloodline, like his mm -hmm. brothers, they came out and they realized that the person that gave Logan the phone, the person that fueled this, you know, viral social media sh stunt was me and George. So they came over and I was drinking a prime, the world's number one hydration drink. And I was just, we'll get to that. We'll yeah. get to that. <laughs> and I was just drinking it. And, uh, and he came and he smashed it out of my hands. And, and then, he, and then, so I shoved them, uh, one of the Usos, I shoved them and they just started, they pulled us both over the, the barricade, started pummeling on our heads, like beating the crap out of us. So at that point, I'm just talking like, you know, praying for, to God for, for <laughs> life, you know, like help me please. Yeah. And then he rolled me into the ring and I was dazed and just in a stupor, just stumbling around the ring. Like, what do I do? Like, who can I call for help? Like, no one's going to help me. And then out of nowhere, I just felt this kick, this super kick right to my like neck chest line. After that, it was just lights out. Rolled out of the ring. I guess the same happened to George. Luckily, Jake Paul was there, came in and saved the day. Um, but, it, you know, it was a night I'll never forget and a night I can't really remember. So wait, so Roman has a team, right? It mm -hmm. was it was his team who beat you guys up. Are you joining Logan's? Is Logan going to recruit you guys? Mm, you, I, George, and Jake? You know, I'm old, and so I don't know if my body would be able to handle that type of abuse. Uh, you know, that, that was very real. Because you got to understand, like, there's a lot of, like, talk about WWE, a lot of talk about that, that, that um, you know, organization and like what they do but i don't think people truly understand the toll that it takes on these people's bodies and how athletic these people are like i mean these guys are like superhuman like what they're able yeah. to do just night after night um so i mean so i mean yeah logan pretty much tore everything in his knee yeah he, so it's basically the meniscus that, okay. That's messed up. Uh -huh. But regardless, like um, he told me before I came on the show today and I hadn't even known this yet that they are um, they're going to have to amputate the leg <laughs> okay. completely. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. That would be tough. It's it's not it's not ideal news, but I think he's going to continue to wrestle in the WWE. He told me he was going to be going under a new he was going to he told me he was going to evolve to a pseudonym. Um, I think it was Captain Jack Ihop. Or something okay. like that. It was going to be, it's like a pirate based pseudonym. You guys heard he it here take. first. So he wanted me to share that with you guys before anyone else. Okay. So this is a courtside exclusive. Courtside like no one has this info. Captain, what's Ca it? Captain Jack Ihop. <laughs> Captain Jack Ihop. Yeah. 
uh, after the amputation, will be adding a wooden peg correct. to his leg. Correct, yes, a peg yeah. leg, correct. Which but is going to make his frog splashes a little bit more difficult. But I think he'll <laughs> or be able more to, dangerous, yeah, who I knows? think he'll be able to pull it off. Um, you did bring Prime with you today. Yeah, great. Number World's number one hydration drink, fastest growing company. Uh-huh. I mean, this is some great stuff. If you're, if you're thirsty, if you're you know spending too much time in Texas and all the sand and dust gets in your mouth and you just need a drink, this is the drink I would drink. So 0% equity. You, Logan A is one of your best friends you guys yeah. uh host impulsive together sure. done a lot of obviously videos and mm-hmm. business ventures you went on stage with him you got beat up on behalf of him yeah essentially. i even pulled the prime out you know on the grand right. stage for all to see why you know honestly just i feel like a lot of people underestimate what zero percent of this company could be worth uh it's <laughs> It's uh, the company's growing very quickly and I believe we'll have a multi-billion dollar valuation in the next five to 10 years. And so, you know, my my hope is that the 0% will get boosted to maybe 0.0000001% at some point. Now, I can't make, I, you know, I don't know if that's actually going to happen. But until then, um, yeah, you know, Logan, he is my best friend. We started Impulsive together, which has been a great run. And I, I kind of do owe the guy a lot. You know, he gave me my platform. He believed in me when no one else even know who, knew who I was. And um, it's kind of like he's, um, you know, he's Jay-Z and I'm Kanye. Con- well, f- I don't really want to use Kanye as an example right now. <laughs> it's kind of like he's Lil Wayne and I'm Drake. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like he kind of put me on. Why didn't you say like 21 and Drake? Well, no, because he's like, he's like Birdman. If I'm okay. Wayne, it's like, okay. it's like a trickle down effect. See, you know, I, I hope someday to put somebody else on now, you know, that I'm put on, you mm-hmm. know? So, um... It's like he, you know, he. That's he real loyalty me. there. Real loyalty. Speaking of impulsive, um, you guys do a great job on the show. I hey, told you that you. when I met you at the fight, and I've seen like the evolution of your guys's like, hosting abilities and just like where the show has gone. It's super entertaining. Thank you. I think ceiling is endless. So keep up with that. But when you have sports guests on, or even when you have guests <sighs> on that start getting into like a sporty topic, yeah. I can see you wanting to go there if i'm being transparent and then sometimes logan and george kind of just go back to you know another topic yeah. and so i was like i want to have mike on because i feel like he wants to chop it up about sports sometimes yeah we have a- when you because you, you're into like the 80s 90s i yeah. hear you talking about mj or you like say something about magic or when you had Shaq on you know what i mean like you want to dive into it but haven't had that opportunity am i wrong no you're right i mean we have a we have an interesting dynamic on the show like we we bring three very different uh, like styles and skill sets and and knowledge base and interests to the podcast, right? So like you've got Logan, he as he would say is the table, right? Like he brings the you know mass audience. Like every what's Logan Paul up to? Like and mm-hmm. he is a, a great entertainer and storyteller. You've got George who brings a a, a grounded, um, you know, a, a kind of relatable energy to the to the podcast he talks about you know real life issues that are outside the la culture bubble Mm -hmm. you know he talks about jesus he talks about family life he talks about love and that kind of stuff that i think a lot of people relate to and then you've got me and i try to be the cultural side i try to bring in you know the the music the sports the movies the the you know a lot of the guests um just those relationships and try Mm -hmm. to stay up to date on what's going on in the culture so that's like kind of what i do um i would say that all three of us are terrible at at like knowing anything about sports i used to be massive i the first show i ever watched was sports center i mean i grew up in connecticut not far from bristol like sitting yeah. on my dad's lap watching sports center when i was one year old and grew up collecting sports cards and you know i had every uh stephon marbury and like all these different like basketball players and baseball players cards What's but up? i think as time went by i kind of moved away from sports just a little bit but i still have i still try to keep up a, a knowledge on it but i'm definitely gonna piss off and annoy your audience as it pertains to sports conversation <laughs> That's right it's there. okay they won't judge i'm taking you out of your comfort zone which i like, I like to do with my guests Starting your own small business can be a total roller coaster. Between all the bumpy twists and turns comes the actual business side of your business, which can really throw you for a loop. Luckily with QuickBooks, you can manage your business with confidence from the start. So no matter how bumpy the ride gets, you can always stay on track. New business, no problem. Success starts with Intuit QuickBooks. Learn more at quickbooks.com. I want to warm you up with a little game. Okay. I'm sure you're familiar with Start Bench Cut. You down? Yeah, I'm down, but I'm just going to I'm going to fail, man. So There's no miserable. fail. It's your Start Bench Cut. It's subjective. Okay. 
First up, we have basketball for you. Jordan, LeBron, and Kobe. Oh man, <laughs> this is a this is such a hard question. I mean, dude, just like, talk us through it. Like, I'm, what's okay, going I'm gonna your mind? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna start Michael. I'm okay. gonna start MJ. I mean, I look at MJ as the greatest basketball player of all time. Okay. Um, he is he is electric to watch. He is. Uh, a point scoring clutch machine that can win games that could he's just magic he's did you he's, watch him as a kid yeah absolutely i did so bulls era you absolutely. Got to see him? bulls era bulls knicks so. pistons like that dirty grungy refs leave them let them play let them fight yeah. type era yes lebron and kobe bean bryant it, it hurts to say it but I, I i'm gonna i'm gonna have lebron on the bench and i'm gonna cut kobe dude Honestly, and I hate I hate to say that because it has so many like just factors and and things involved in it. And major respect to Kobe. This is not like of course, right. no, 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 of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, l l let's make you know let's not mince words or make any mistakes. Kobe Bryant's one of the greatest basketball players of all time mm -hmm. in history. But you put him in a pot of like really tough I choices. <laughs> uh, LeBron is 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 a uh, a powerhouse. It, 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 as far as uh, goats are concerned, I would say it's it's Michael, then it's LeBron uh, in, in second place, and so like. You know, if you need somebody that's gonna that's gonna show up and and you know uh, s drive fear into the other team and and get to the hoop and and yeah. you know do what he's supposed to do to win games. I mean, I gotta I gotta take uh, LeBron. What puts MJ ahead of LeBron for you? I just think I just think it's uh, I just think it's his ability to clutch up. I think it's just his ability to to make plays happen. And and I talked about two three peats. <laughs> Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And I talked about LeBron driving fear into the hearts of the, of, of the opposing team, but, like, dude, nobody wanted to play against MJ. Like, like Shaq talked about it on the podcast. Like, he was like, mm -hmm. dude, that that's the guy. Yeah. Like, he, he, you know, like, when you have other players, I, I feel like the NBA is all in agreement on who the greatest player of all time is. I think we have a lot of conversation I I, about I it. I would say no. No, oh, I would really? disagree. Really? Yeah. You hear a lot of differing opinions on it. I think it's hard just because of eras, right? And yeah. and you're getting to a place now, even with like LeBron, he's not retiring yet. Like he still has a few more years in him, but he's almost on his way out. And these younger guys don't even respect him in the way of these like middle tier guys. Right. They obviously respect him, but they don't fear him as much. So there's this kind of like new wave coming. And, and then a lot of people take into consideration just like, the timing of the world right now and all the like exterior factors and the competition that there was like back in the 90s and how the game has like expanded from the three point line and beyond and people are taking like two steps over half like you have to play defense full completely court. different game you know what i mean so like and i'm not one to to say like one was better than the other but i do think like this debate will go on until the end of time i'm wondering who's going to be that next person that enters the conversation though yeah you know i mean, what I mean? and of also like two. what's the like what's the metric for the decision making it's hard right? to have that because if you if you talk about rings it's like okay well bill russell has 11 so why isn't he up there right you know yeah and you then you've got points then, champions you've got you know you've got yeah. assist champions you've got all these people that you have are, kareem yeah. is like the leading scorer, scorer which like lebron will pass that mm -hmm. but then it's like okay now lebron's on top and and michael's not and he's played for 20 seasons so it's like you know it's hard some of it's just subjective but some of it just I've, comes down to like it's completely unrelated, but it, it almost goes back to, this sounds so stupid. It almost goes back to the cheeseburger conversation that we were having. <laughs> Everyone knows yeah. that Shake Shack and Five Guys are superior burgers to In-N-Out. In-N-Out is, In is, is a $3.99 cheeseburger. Price-wise, value, a lot of those things. Yeah. But if you ask someone in SoCal or if you ask someone in, in, um, in, in Texas about Whataburger, the regional subjectivity to that decision making is so based in yo. That's where I went after T ball games. Like mm -hmm. when I when I True. grew up, True. and you said yo, who is your hero? Who is the person that that means everything to you? The person that that changed your life. The person that made you believe that anything was possible. That was Michael Jordan. Was it for so That's many dope. of us that grew up That's in that? Dope. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, yeah. what is the real metric for deciding who is the greatest of all time? Is that your favorite player? Ever and it's that was hard your favorite for it player. Not to be. Okay. I, I mean, honestly, mine was Allen Iverson. AI is a is a <laughs> legend. Legend. Let AI Marbury was one of my favorites, and then I loved Sean Kemp. Sean Kemp out of Seattle Super Supersonics with Gary Payton. Yeah, that was like another like that was my NBA Jam team. By the way, I went to China with Kobe and Stephon Marbury, and it was around like FIBA World Cup time. He's an absolute icon in yeah. China. Yeah. Oh, like, really? Insane. Really? Yeah, because he stayed over there, and right, like his right. whole family and stuff is over there, and it's kind of 
I don't know, cool to see that transition. He's like, I found a home in China because like, he was playing over there, making a ton of money, right. super successful. And he's like, I just love it here. So it as far as ball handling is concerned, like that now you're talking about now you're getting into like another um, what are those called? Like superlatives where you're talking <laughs> about like like I should have done that with you. <laughs> I mean, dude, AI is like the remember the crossover and when you were and a kid, we everybody over. wanted to nail that Heck AI yeah. crossover like oh. He, to me, most influential NBA player of all time for the culture. Oh, 100%. And then I think right up next is Steph Curry. Steph Curry, that's now you, now another superlative. There, There's a category where there's no discussion, no debate. Oh, yeah. The purest shooter of all time. Hands down, no questions asked, no comparison, right. no debate. We don't have to talk about it. We don't have to bring the Electoral <laughs> College into it. You have the best shooter in the history of basketball. Yeah, it's in scary. Steph Curry. It it's, makes no it's sense. It's disgusting. It's so good. Okay, I want to move on to music. I know you're a music guy too. Yes. We have Drake, Jay Z, and Tupac. Start bench cut. Who did this, dude? Yo, like this I is did horrible this. right now. Welcome to the courtside club. <laughs> Yo, oh. <laughs> I feel like you're n you're not really stumped like this on other shows. No, because you're asking <laughs> me questions that don't have answers. Like these are this is this one specifically. Have an opinion, Mike. Once again, what's your oh my god, dude. This one is so hard and 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 like will drive listeners crazy and everything. Okay. Having grown up, not grown up, but having spent the majority of my life in a, an unsavory place that I'm not sure how familiar you are with or, or the audience is. Um, Jay-Z gave me the belief that you could flip a life of crime to a life of something else and be successful at it. Um, you know, he was a he was a street guy who who was in a in a, you know, really crappy upbringing in a really terrible Marcy projects in Brooklyn mm -hmm. and found a way to convert the crack life to the rap life. And, you know, for people that don't know my story, they, they probably look at me and are like, dude, like how the hell can you relate to that? But like for someone that spent, you know, eight years of my life as a opiate addict and as a person that was involved in, you know, the, that lifestyle, he, his rhymes and, and, um, you know, like like all of his albums, um, you know, in my lifetime, all, all like Reasonable Doubt, all the stuff that he put out has real meaning to me and a, and a lot of it, it a lot of importance. And I think it's it's hard for people in this current day and age to understand the importance of Jay-Z to hip hop. But once again, I mean, he's he is one of the most important and iconic people in the hip hop industry for so many different reasons for like you look at Kanye West who's not on this list right on these mm -hmm. three Kanye West is a result of Jay-Z Kanye West is a yeah. result of Jay-Z believing in his beats believing in him as an artist right and ha and and rock and Rockefeller signing him so Jay-Z the rapper Jay-Z the businessman Jay-Z the um the catalyst and and creator of so many other careers not to mention married to to potentially the hottest uh, you know female artist like, in the game right that's my that's my guy so that that would be my starter we're starting jay-z starting jay-z um it would be really hard to cut drake in this current setting mm -hmm. um having just dropped this album with 21 it, um he needed a an album after what he put out with Nevermind. uh you know no offense like i i just Right. Uh, maybe I was one of the people that he described that just like didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. But like his new album's incredible. The album with Twenty One is the old Drake that we're all used to, like the um, um, if if you're reading this is too late type Drake that I just love, like that mixtape mm -hmm. Drake. Um, but Tupac talked about some <laughs> serious stuff in his music. You're having like a, a crisis here with your conscience because like. You're Jay asking me questions because that are well, no, because like Jay Z and Tupac's lyrics seem to speak to you more in like a deeper way, from what I'm gathering, than um, Drake at the moment. How could they not? Right? Like you got you got Jay Z talking about socioeconomic conditions and how to make it out of the hood and all the things that he talked about, right? And and yeah. inspiring you know the black youth and also the youth of of you know underprivileged communities. You've got. Tupac doing that even to a greater extent, right? And so now the question becomes, am I trying to 
uh, inspire and motivate, or am I trying to go to uh, Encore and bet twenty five thousand dollars a hand on the blackjack tables with Drake? Yeah. I love both of those things. Yeah. Those are both like chocolate chips at Win, like or at Encore, like you know, like that. That's amazing. Like that's right up my alley, right? But once again, I mean, it's so hard to say it, but like for the time being, until he like until Drake climbs that second mountain and starts to really like make an impact on like the world mm -hmm. i guess i gotta start i gotta start jay make sure Pac is on the bench and and cut drake and that hurts because <laughs> i love drake dude I know. but i feel I, like i'm making the right decision i think i saw some of your tweets where you're like super hyping up drake but uh you know what he took one for the team yeah, okay dude. speaking of team logan george and jeff dude come on bro okay. jeff which jeff you're jeff you're your side Wittick. Wittick. yeah He's made a ton of appearances lately on the night shift. Dude, how am I supposed to answer this question? Okay, 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 okay. Ready? Yeah, Ready? we okay. got this. Let's hear it. Okay. This I'm gonna give you an interesting answer here. So I would I would start Jeff okay. because that's that's my guy right now, right? Like like me and Jeff, I think like as a duo on YouTube right now and just in all content is incredible. Like me and him, two East Coast scumbags. He's right across the Long Island Sound from me. Like yeah. just just two idiots, right? And like we we love hanging out. We make great content together. We make each other laugh. Like he's a person that I like just love to spend time with, right? On the bench, I need George, bro, because he's like there to talk to me like, yo, like the route you're going down right now read john 3 18. he's that angel on your shoulder yeah yeah yeah. he's like dude like okay. that girl bro she's not right for you like <laughs> you know what i'm saying like you shouldn't be you should go to sleep right now we have a big podcast tomorrow mm -hmm. like you can't stay out till 4 a.m read corinthians you know like bro you can't you got to stop eating cheeseburgers you're putting weight on read revelations like it's always going to be read something in the bible you know what i'm saying which yeah. is great okay and then so he'll be on the bench, and then I'm gonna cut Logan. I'm gonna slice him, dude. I'm gonna cut him. One, he has one leg. He <laughs> has a peg leg, he's a pirate. <laughs> Two, regardless of what I do to him, he's fine. He doesn't, he like, okay. he's got a lot of equity in prime. I have 0%. Mm -hmm. he, he has a wrestling career. I get beat up in WWE. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. he's good. He doesn't need me, like, so like, I, I feel like it's almost like with him, He's a butterfly, and I gotta let him go. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like a, um, like a Ben Simmons situation. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. I just like, if you I, love something, let it go. Yeah, and just you like know? see if it like flies away, and just like let it come back. <laughs> you know, Ben Simmons, he came back. He stayed with the Nets, but like who knows what's gonna happen, right? Yeah. Like he may end up going to you know somewhere else, right? So peace, Logan. Starting Jeff. Benching George, yeah. cutting Logan. Yep. You did a great job with start bench cut. Thank you. It was very thought provoking. You, th those questions are incredible. <laughs> we don't even, we don't ask questions like that on a ball. <laughs> like, yo, you're crushing it. <laughs> Football season is here and nothing beats seeing your favorite team live. Not only does Vivid Seats have great NFL ticket prices, they're also the official ticketing partner of ESPN. And with Vivid Seats rewards, when you buy 10 tickets, you get the 11th free. Download the app or visit vividseats.com today. Vivid Seats, life happens live. Receive a reward credit equal to the average price of the 10 tickets purchased, excluding taxes, fees, and processing costs. See vividseats.com slash rewards for terms and conditions. All right, people, we're brought to you by Caesars Sportsbook, the greatest sports betting app of all time. See, it's not just about the daily promos, odd boosts, or the hundreds of ways to wager. It's about the immortal words of Caesar himself. You bet you get with Caesars Rewards. Every bet you place on the app, no matter the outcome, earns towards exclusive perks at Caesars Rewards destinations everywhere. Hotel stays, concert tickets, bonuses, and more. Download the Caesars Caesars Sportsbook app, become a Caesars Rewards member today, and get more with every wager. Must be 21 or older to gamble. Gambling problem? Call or text 1-800-522-4700. Getting back to Impulsive, yeah. you brought up Shaq partway through because you guys recently interviewed Shaq. Yeah. How did you like that? It was a different setting for Impulsive. Uh, I was really excited for that episode. It was it awesome. Was, it was different because you had a you had a live audience also. Yeah, so 
there's there's so many different factors and i think like being 300 and you know 50 episodes in now like we've especially for me and logan who have been there since the start we've kind of mastered all atmospheres we get these like little like um like these nerves sometimes before like a big show Mm -hmm. and we realized like around episode 250 maybe that every time we would have nerves before a big show we would meet after the show and be like dude we crushed that and it got to a point where we finally just programmed our minds to understand the fact that we're just going to win on every episode. Like we don't, we, we are, we come to the, to the table prepared. We know everybody knows their role. They know what mm-hmm. they're going to do. Now the live audience is definitely throws things off. And also uh, something you could relate to. I'm sure we travel for our podcast. There's no, mm-hmm. like, like imagine if you never got to play a home game. Like, we don't ever get to play a home game. We're constantly on the road where every game for us is right. an away game. We're in different houses, different hotels, villas different countries we've done podcasts in iceland we've done podcasts in dubai we've done podcasts in puerto rico and la yeah um and so we've we've gotten extremely versatile and and comfortable and i i so so for the shack episode there was a live audience but it was a it was a uh uh, a warm audience because it was distributors for prime and it was like people that we knew like were excited to watch the show and they were fans um but Shaq, he's a very interesting podcast guest. He, uh, it's his show. Let's just put it that way. Like you're you're on the Shaq show for the oh, time yeah. that you have a podcast with him, for right? Sure. He's a, he's a entertainer. He's a celebrity. He would hate that I called him that. But he's you know one of the greatest, right. and he knows yeah, exactly yeah. what he's doing and how to talk. And so. Um, it, it was good. Uh, Logan had a brain fart and can't like called the show early. Like he was like, well, I know you have stuff to do. And he- I saw that I was bombed <laughs> when, when you I mean, we didn't know. Nobody would have ever known unless you guys were transparent about it, <laughs> which was cool that you were like we would have just thought that was you know the time right um but i was like damn he goes well man longer. that's i guess that's it for you Shaq." and i look at him like bro what are you talking about it's in 30 minutes we have an hour with him and i didn't say that to him yeah. because you you know you get in a habit of not like really second guessing the flow of the show and like going back on stuff but it was great i mean it was it was awesome um and and for me you know as a, a sports fan and as an nba fan like to just it, it was another like check box and another situation in my life where I had a moment where I said to myself like like yo soak this in dude and I've had a lot of moments like that and and I'm really grateful for that do you know that I was in NBA 2k yes I do okay so when I hosted NBA 2k TV just like a little story for you that's like your like your rise right is is that was my first big opportunity right, for sure right, right, okay. yeah, yeah yeah so i okay. was there for five seasons but um and and i had interviews with 2k and then my audition was to actually interview and produce and direct the shoot with Shaq and ernie johnson so i interviewed both of them like at different times but my first interview for nba 2k tv was with Shaq. it was my first time meeting him <laughs> and it was my audition right so it's I always like he's been in my life since then. I see him every year and like he's coached my celebrity basketball games. He's given me life advice. Like when I was going through a breakup, he was like there for me. Like he's just an awesome dude and I always bring him up, but I'll always just like be indebted to him for that too, because it's partly the reason why I got the biggest opportunity that right. I've had. So it was so cool. So, so he has like a, r- a lot of meaning to you. Like oh yeah. To He's you. awesome. Yeah. And so that's why like when I saw you guys interviewing and I could tell like, to be honest, I could tell you guys were a little bit nervous in the mm-hmm. beginning too, but, and I get that because he's such a big presence, but that's also a part where I kind of pinch myself. Like, I'm lucky that I have this relationship where like when I see him, I just run up and hug him and say, how are you doing? But that's not normal. Like he's still this larger than life human. I just have like, you know, gained that. So I I think like we, there's like different levels of the nerves. And I think I'm, I'm for as far as just interacting with celebrities are concerned, I'm probably the lowest on the nerve scale. Like I, I feel great with everyone now. Yeah. Logan's the middle. And then George is still, not new to the show but like it, when he sits down in front of an audience with Shaq like he's he's feeling it a little bit and you saw he's that a, kind of reflect no, in the show no he's a big personality and presence and it's nothing sure. against you guys either like the nerves went away in like two seconds right but like I could just see that with like the live audience but, on that show I was yeah. I was nervous so yeah. the fact that you saw that I, I definitely was um did you see uh did you see his beef with Kanye on Twitter this I week I did yeah wild bro well, wild times man because i know jamie salter 
too. Okay. Like really well. Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. I know the, the whole Salter family, like shout out to the Salters are incredible people. Yeah. Um, phenomenal people. And so I saw that and, and, and Shaq's clapback was like incredible. Like he just yeah. slammed them. And I was like, dude, this is crazy right now. Well, he's not really one to like get into drama on purpose. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. he's not really into that. He's not running his mouth about a bunch of people. But when you pull him in, he's also not going to back down. Do you know what I mean? He's freaking Jack. <laughs> like, please keep my name out of your mouth. You yeah, know what 100%. I mean? <laughs> I know his I know his son uh, Miles really well too. We're okay. we're good friends, and I mean, great family, great dude. But uh, yeah, he's definitely he's definitely ready to protect his brand for sure, which is an incredible brand for and his family for sure. Yeah. What other guests have made you a little bit nervous? Any? I can't even begin. I mean. We've had so many insane shows, like like it would be hard to even like begin to scratch the surface. But I mean, we did the debut episode of Six Nine, like coming out of prison. Like we oh, we wow. like yeah got Six Nine. He showed up at this was prior to like Steve will do it, putting him on and on YouTube and making yeah. and humanizing him. And we got him. You know, he rolled up with like twenty security guards. Like he's obviously at that point coming out like believed to be a massive target of the people that he he kind of right. you know snitched on yeah. um and so that was like a really heated episode um i mean we got into massive debates with you know uh Shapiro we had Shapiro on the show we had Alex huh. Jones on the show which were you know super heated episodes um you know one that you guys did an excellent job with was Antonio Brown wild, wild episode park city i mean just no random. but you guys did such a good job with him because it was one of his first when he was going on his little interview tour mm -hmm. after he kind of danced and like ran off the field yep. everybody's like what's going on went on full send it was a, it wasn't maybe not their greatest work if yep. i'm being honest well, it was and early for them they were just like just kind of coming up yeah i mean just the in the interview in general i i didn't get as much as i got out of your guys interview sure. i thought you did a really great job with it and that was one where i could see you being like a little bit nervous because there's just so much on the table and also just so much unknown and he's also somebody you never know which way he's gonna go on most one of the most unpredictable people i i yeah. ever <laughs> i mean he that was one of the weirdest shows i've ever done i mean he just was you know, showed up, sat up, laid down on the couch. Right. And, you know, me, it was, uh, George wasn't there. It was me and Logan. We were in this, you know, ski villa in Park City having just skied. I mean, that's one of the other, like, weird parts about the show is, like, because of the travel aspect of it, we just end up in these very strange scenarios. Like, you know, we're in Iceland with, um, with the mountain from, uh, Game of Thrones. Like, you know, this massive yeah. man in his home territory in, in uh, Reykjavik. I probably slaughtered the, the pronunciation, but like we just end up in these very strange environments and we've gotten really good at at um, at maneuvering through these kind of strange and tough interviews with people that, you know, a lot of times like they don't do podcasts like, we, yeah. you know, we've we've done a, a bunch of podcasts recently like. You know, we, we have a David Guetta podcast coming out soon cool. and there's a language barrier there to an yeah. extent. I mean, he obviously speaks English, but a, a cultural at least barrier there. And, you know, we've got a Rob Dyrdek episode coming out. We put out a Bobby Lee episode today who's one of the most eccentric, you know, out there characters, mm -hmm. uncensored characters of all time on, on the Internet. And so um, it, it that that show changed my life. That show changed all of our lives, L Logan included. I think Impulsive was a massive part of his redemption arc and i think everyone would agree with it because it gave with, with that because it gave people a look at what this guy's really like and what's going what the inner workings of logan paul is is versus or are versus uh you know a oh good morning logan what's popping which is what people knew prior so mm -hmm. wait what was it uh that it was logan's intro to his vlogs hey yo good morning logan what's popping <laughs> so i guess i never watched those <laughs> <laughs> Better off. Well, his, his quarantine vlogs were great. Okay, I, I came ones. on this this tail end. You mentioned it briefly about your story, which I know the guys kind of give you crap about when you when you bring up your book or whatnot. But I think it's really it really is inspirational. Um, do you see yourself? Well, first of all, your book, The Fifth Vital, yep. USA Today best selling mm -hmm. book. Congratulations mm -hmm. on you. that. You've told us in podcast interviews on Impulsive, whatnot, that a lot of fans come up to you and say that that book has changed their life. Mm -hmm. Do we have another book in the works? Will there be a follow-up? There will be. I'm working on it. Uh, the The book writing process is a completely different animal. Um, 
I think there's a lot of celebrities and influencers and just regular people out there who work with ghostwriters who, and, and, mm-hmm. and there's nothing wrong with that and work with people that, you know, um, write their stuff. I wrote my entire book from start to finish. It took me years to write the fifth vital, which is the reason it's as authentic and truthful and transparent and honest and painful and mm-hmm. moving to read. Um, that, that, you know, I, I spent so many nights just covered in tears, like writing that and just, it, 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 I remember it would, it would, it would f- floor me, like cripple me to write about this, these really like painful, tragic events that, um, I, I kind of put myself through in my life, um, as a result of my addiction and, and as, mm-hmm. and, and something that so many people in America right now, as we continue to navigate this, uh, opiate epidemic continue to struggle with. And, um, so for my second book, uh, I've been writing a little bit, but it's it's very slow because I'm doing podcasts, I'm doing the circuit, I'm putting out vlogs every week, I'm doing Impulsive, I'm working on Cheeseburger IP, I'm working on you know mm-hmm. all of these different programs, um, and it, it, you need to really dedicate yourself to the craft of writing. It's a very intimate process that demands you know this your utmost attention, and um, and so it, it's been a slow process, but. I do really want to get it done. I have some framework for it. Um, and basically what it is, is it's just picking up where the fifth vital left off. And it's uh, a a series of stories that are from today, to th- th- this current time period, and the learnings that I've absorbed as a result of those, those stories and the lessons that I apply to my life and I would want the reader to apply to theirs. Cool. Um, crazy stuff. I mean, yeah. overseas trouble and... You know, obviously my dating life, which is kind of precarious and strange and just like that whole situation. And um, so I'm working on it, but uh, it's 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 a slow process. right Cool. Now. Yeah. We'll be on the lookout for it before I let you go. We have some buzzer beaters on the courtside club. Are you I ready lo- for I those? Love <laughs> I love this. <laughs> what is the best game that you've ever been courtside for? I don't go to a lot of courtside games, like like games. You've been, you. Oh, you know, been, I have for yeah. sure. Usually at MSG. Um, wait, I was. Can it be? It does it have to be basketball? No. Okay, so Court I was courtside, field side, ring side. So I was just this year. I was at the Win Field Club at the Raider Stadium in Vegas. Cool. It is one of the coolest experiences on the planet for sports fans. You base it's basically a club that is on the field, so you're field level. They've got bottle service. They serve you king crab legs, A5 Wagyu. They spray champagne. There's that infamous shot of the people spraying champagne thinking the Raiders were going to win the game, and then they lost. (laughs) It was all over ESPN. I was there for uh, – I think it was that game. It was was Raiders-Cardinals. Okay. And it was the, everybody thought the game was over, and the Cardinals ended up coming back to win it, yeah, yeah, yeah. which was like a major depressing day for all the Raiders fans. That was probably one of the cooler games. That, I think it was one of the most exciting games of this current season. Then, then another one. I was at the uh, I was at the Xfinity Center in Philly when the Eagles won the Super Bowl. Cool. And so that's not obviously courtside or field side, but I was uh, there and then because I'm an Eagles fan. Oh, okay. Great season for yeah, me right yeah. now, obviously. And so I got to celebrate on Broad Street in Philly. Um, and so, you know, I've got so many cool sporting memories. But if you do have courtside seats and you'd like a, a, a fun and entertaining person to join you and you're watching <laughs> this program right now, please reach out via Instagram. I would love to sit courtside with you. Well, speaking of, who is one person dead or alive that you'd love to sit courtside mm. with? I've seen so many personalities like change and like come in and out of my desire to like want to be friends with them lately. Like I think people mm-hmm. have been a lot of people have been showing their true colors and my answer might have changed over the past like year, to be honest with you, because of just how like political and like weird we've gotten as like a country. But I would say probably I would say pro oh, you know, actually there can I give you two? Go for They're it. They're both dead. <laughs> Unfortunately, actually, can I give you three? They're all dead. <laughs> yeah, it's like such a horrible way to do it. Okay, because that just sucks. We're gonna bring all three back to life. Yes, Who are they? Uh, number one is Mac Miller. Okay. Uh, massive inspiration to me. A person that like literally pulled me from out of addiction, and and it was with me through my early recovery through his music, and then unfortunately we lost to his demons, which kills me and and hurts me every day. Still, to be honest, I'm still not over that. Uh, that would be one. Number two. 
all similar kind of story would be Anthony Bourdain, who I look at as kind of like one of the gurus of food, travel, culture. Mm -hmm. I look at him as an inspiration to me for my content, and I would love to like become a travel and culture explorer like Anthony was. And then three would be Robin Williams. Also, Man. similar story. I know all three answers are like kind of depressing, but it like is, all. But it, no, it, they they were they were all life changing people, and we were all sad about their deaths for sure. It's a unfortunate juxtaposition, or whatever you want to call it, that unfortunately a certain level of genius tends to dance with a certain level of illness and mm -hmm. you know we're seeing it now with kanye to be honest with you and and it, and it sucks because i've i've looked at kanye as you know a a, a culture shifter an interrupter mm -hmm. one of the greatest to ever do it in in hip-hop and it's it's uh sad and unfortunate to see you know his, his current trajectory and i hope uh that his, the people around him will jump in and kind of offer the help to him that that these other guys didn't get unfortunately and that and that sucks but those would be my those would probably be my three answers i wish i had like cool. an easy like happy answer no it's okay my mom <laughs> you know like <laughs> what event in history would you have loved to have been courtside for it could be a sporting event or other i'm just gonna bring it back to the birds again miracle at the meadowlands too okay the giants are destroying the eagles <laughs> And you've got this super dynamic Mike Vick, Deshaun Jackson combo. Hate Mike Vick, love Mike Vick, whatever the case. That yeah. was one of the coolest combos to ever grace the, the, the Eagles starting you know team, right? And so you've got them down by this massive score. And all of a sudden, they just start to put on this show where, where Vick is just going down. I'm getting goosebumps right now. <laughs> where Vick is just going downfield and hitting Jackson with these passes that just don't make sense. Bombs. Bombs. <laughs> And for whatever reason, the game, you know, the Giants are still up and all they have to do is kick the ball out of bounds. All they have to do is not kick the ball to Deshaun, to Deshaun Jackson. <laughs> like the easiest thing of all time, do not kick the ball to Deshaun Jackson. So the punter kicks it so off. So what happens next, Mike? It goes straight to Jackson. He grabs yeah. the ball and just turns the afterburners on. And just, <laughs> I'm sitting there like, in a state of shock. Like for me, it's similar to the Patriots Falcons game okay. that everybody obviously always talks about. Just, I don't know how to express the feeling. So to have been at that game, that would probably be my answer. Where were you watching that game? My friend Don's house in Orange, Connecticut. Like just <laughs> the most random place. I always remember that, that yeah. day. But like if I had been at that game, it would have been crazy. That'd be dope. Yeah. Before I let you go, where can our courtside audience find you? And what should they be on the lookout for? Just more impulsive episodes, to be honest. That's kind of like the bread and butter right now. I mean, the night shift will probably take a little bit of a transition in 2023. I don't know how much longer I could like run the, the map doing these vlogs. It's so exhausting. Um, definitely by the fifth vital. I mean, that's 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 my biggest thing. That's that's what made my life, you know, f made me feel like I was accomplished in life. So if you want to know more about the background story, then that's fifth vital on Amazon. Love that. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having I me. I appreciate it. <laughs> Anytime. Let me know whenever you want me back. <laughs> and I'll, Big and I'll time, be Mike. <laughs> <laughs> the wrestler. <laughs>What's up, guys? It's Rachel Demita. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode of Courtside Club. Make sure that you like, rate, and subscribe to ESPN's YouTube channel and wherever you listen to your podcasts. We have new episodes coming to you guys every single week, so stay tuned for that, and I'll see you soon.